Hello and welcome to our UC Berkeley virtual visit. We're so excited that you are joining us for this hour long overview of our campus and we can't wait to share it with you. A little bit about myself. I will be the moderator for today. My name is Alyssa and I use the she her pronouns. I'm originally from Salinas, California, which is about two or two and a half hours away from Berkeley. So not too far. And I am a junior, a rising junior. So I just finished my sophomore year at Cal and it is very bittersweet hitting that halfway point. And I'm majoring in society and the environment through our College of Natural Resources. A little bit about my involvement. I'm part of the UC Rally Committee, which is our big spirit group on campus. I'm also involved with Greek life and leadership in the residence halls. And last semester, I also joined a pre-law fraternity. Now, a little bit about our virtual visit. It'll be a 45 minute presentation in which you will be able to type any and all of your questions in the Q&A function at the bottom of your screen. We will also be sending out a series of polls so that as you are getting to know our campus, we are also getting to know you and are able to cater the tour towards you. You'll also notice that this session is being recorded, but there are also different versions available on our website that you can check out and hear from more students' perspectives. Now, this campus overview is from the student perspective. And that being said, there is no admissions or financial aid information, but there is a separate admissions presentation that you can sign up for and check out. Finally, we will end with about a 15 minute Q&A session and we'll do our best to answer all the questions that you guys ask in the Q&A function. But don't be afraid or don't wait just until the end. Make sure you're asking throughout right as they come to mind, because not only will we will we be answering those live, but we also have a lot of ambassadors on the back end ready to type answers for you so you can get all the information you need. And without further ado, I would love to hand it over to Lauren and Sophia, our amazing guides for today. Hi everyone, my name is Sophia and I go by the pronouns she, her, and hers. I'm originally from Glendale, California, which is just outside Los Angeles. And I just finished up my freshman year, so I'm gonna be a sophomore this fall. I'm planning on majoring in environmental economics and policy and possibly doing a double major in history. Aside from being a campus ambassador, I'm involved with EAPS, which stands for Environmental Economics and Policy Students at Berkeley. Um, and essentially, it's just a um, club dedicated to facilitating community surrounding the environmental economics and policy major. Additionally, I work as a dock hand at Cal Adventures, um, which is located at the Berkeley Marina. And essentially, I just um, rent out paddle boarding, sailboating, and um, kayaking equipment to Berkeley students, which is so much fun. Um, and then at the end of last semester, I joined Hermanos Unidos, which is one of Berkeley's many student organizations dedicated to um, facilitating community surrounding the Latinx community at Berkeley. Hi, everyone. My name is Lauren. Uh, I go by the pronouns she, her, hers. I am from Temecula, California, which is located in SoCal, about an hour north of San Diego. And I'm going to be a rising senior this year, majoring in political science. And outside of school, I'm a manager for the ASUC Superb, which is an entertainment student run organization on campus. We put on various events for the student population, like comedy shows, concerts, all that sort of stuff, super fun. Um, I'm also a member of the Cal ACLU, which does activism work on campus. And I was also in the fall program for freshmen. So if you have any questions regarding all of that, I'd be happy to answer them. Great, so I'll take this opportunity to welcome you all to Berkeley um, via some images and a little um, personal welcome. I'll start off by saying that we recently celebrated 150 years of women at Berkeley, which means that we just waited two years um, since the founding of the university to start admitting women. And we have since been celebrating that legacy and um, that's a really special part of our history. Um, in the upper left-hand corner, you'll see that school spirit is alive and well at Berkeley. Our football team is one of the main ways that we facilitate and grow this spirit. And I can't wait to start attending football games um, next semester. In the center there, you'll see one of many bear statues at, on our campus. Um, this one right here is actually called Sturdy the Bear and a lot of students will take pictures inside of him. 
um, or just like pose next to him as it's one of the bigger statues on campus. In the upper right hand corner, you'll see a picture of our Glade, which is sort of like a student hub on campus. It's located pretty much in the center of campus and students will often just hang out with each other, study, do homework, um, take a cliche college photo, maybe throw a frisbee, um, but it's one of my favorite spots on campus and it's basically this huge lush green space. Um, and yeah, welcome to Berkeley. So a quick overview of the tour today. Um, first, we're gonna do an overview of Berkeley, what the campus culture is like, our history. Then we'll go over academics, housing and dining, health and safety, student resources, student life, our athletics, the library and research opportunities, and what it's been like in remote learning and how we're transitioning out of that. So we'll start off with a little bit of history. UC Berkeley was founded in 1868, and we were actually the first UC campus to be established. You might be familiar with some other UC campuses like UCLA, UC Irvine, um, but we were actually the first UC campus, and because of that, we get to go by a few fun names, such as Berkeley, Cal, and the University of California. Our mascot is the Golden Bears for all athletic and school spirit purposes. We also have a physical mascot, Oski the bear, you'll see pictured in the upper left-hand corner there. He's so much fun. And I have seen him a few times on campus and he's always dancing and facilitating school spirit, being goofy. And I can't wait to see him at the football games too. In terms of campus size, we are a pretty large research institution and we have just over 30,000 undergraduate students and just under 12,000 graduate students. Um, but if you're worried about size, that concern is definitely going to be um, mediated once you step on campus and see how um, many resources and opportunities exist because of our size. And so it's something that I've really grown to love. Um, and in terms of historical landmarks, you'll see our clock and bell tower, the Campanile, pictured in the upper right hand corner. That's actually a really awesome aerial drone shot. And it is actually the third largest clock and bell tower in the world. So I think it's pretty cool that it's housed right here on our campus. Below that, you'll see a picture of Sather Gate. And Sather Gate actually marks the main entrance to our campus. It is this beautiful, beautiful structure. Um, and it's often referenced in popular films as well as sort of an icon of academia. Um, maybe if you've seen Monsters, Inc. or Ant-Man and the Wasp, you will be familiar with this structure too. As far as our campus culture goes, um, one thing that I think really describes everyone on the Berkeley campus from students to faculty is the idea of change makers. And by this, I mean, everyone here really is part of a different discipline, doing something different, but we all share a goal to have an impact in the world and make positive change in the world around us. And I think that this really stems from the history of our campus. Uh, we were the birthplace of the free speech movement back in the 60s, and this was a series of protests where students gathered to advocate and fight for the right to speak freely. Um, regarding political issues that they cared about. Prior to these protests, they weren't able to do so on the UC campus. And this was something that sparked a ton of protests across the nation on the university level. And because of these, we're now able to speak freely about issues on the campus. And you'll see that happening frequently at Berkeley. Um, this really has woven into the fabric of what we are as a school, even today. And today, students and faculty still care about free speech and leadership and challenging the status quo. And they really integrate these ideas into their entrepreneurship, research, and innovation. So regardless of what your focus is, I think at Berkeley, you'll really be motivated to be a change maker in that specific discipline. Um, on top of that, there's so much community on campus. Um, we really share compassion, a passion, passion for social justice. And aside from activism, we share a spirit and pride for the school. And you can really see that 
And the group that encapsulate it, encapsulates it the best, which is the rally committee down on the bottom right in front of Sather Gate. Um, they really spread that spirit across campus, especially on game days and lift everyone up to share a pride in our athletics and get excited for the games. Um, so if that's where you want your focus to be, that might be a good group for you. Um, and then the, we also value diversity and excellence and public service. There's so many public service opportunities. And with that change maker idea, we really want to make change in our local community through public service as well. So all really great aspects of the culture and the culture of Berkeley is really something that drew me to the school, um, especially as a political science major. Yeah, just continuing on um, surrounding culture at Berkeley, Cal students are involved in a variety of different um, interests and passions and activities. And that spirit definitely permeates beyond the classroom. You'll see a picture of one of our protests, one of our student protests pictured in the upper left-hand corner. Um, and then, you know, beyond that, we, because we are such a big school, school spirit is a huge part of our campus culture. And um, like Lauren mentioned, that's largely facilitated by our cheer team, our band, and our rally committee pictured in the upper right hand corner. Um, in terms of research, um, research is obviously huge at a research institution, um, and especially at Berkeley, considering our proximity to. Um, Silicon Valley, there are a lot of tech opportunities as well. You'll see a really cool robot pictured in the, in the middle there. Um, and yeah, I'll just sort of echo what Lauren was saying about um, Berkeley students being change makers and really not only talking about the changes they want to make inside the classroom, but really going out into the world and initiating those changes. Um, it's a really special thing to be a part of. Yeah, and to add on, I really love this slide because it shows like the different ways that you can make change. It might not be active protests for you. And just so you guys know, there's obviously no pressure to get involved in that activism on campus if that's not your thing, but you can get involved in change in so many different ways, like all of the research opportunities that we have and stuff. So it's a really awesome place to be. And going along with that, we don't just have a local impact. We also have a huge global impact constantly. Um, this really showed itself with the COVID research happening on campus. Um, we did trial testing, um, trying to uh, test a saliva test for COVID um, that was more accessible and got faster results than the regular swab test. And students even got to be a part of this trial because they were going to get tested for COVID. Um, so really incredible innovation. And on top of that with COVID, in the beginning of the pandemic, when there was a shortage of respirators, one of their engineering professors and her team of researchers actually developed a cheaper and more accessible respirator to um, you know, make up for that shortage. So it's really global change that you see happening in real time. And it's so incredible to be in that space and just know that your school is a part of that. And then aside from research, again, we're constantly doing advocacy and social justice and trying to provide resources that um, prevent trauma and burnout regarding these topics as well. So, so much innovation and exciting things happening on this campus all the time with the incredible amount of research that's going on. So now we're gonna talk a little bit about academics. Um, you'll see a poll popping up right now just trying to gauge your interest as it pertains to academics. And um, in terms of our undergraduate colleges, we have five, including the College of Letters and Science, the Rouser College of Natural Resources, the College of Environmental Design, the College of Chemistry, and the College of Engineering. And quickly before we get into each of these individually, um, I'll just make a note that when you apply to Cal, we do recommend that if you're interested in a major within the College of Chemistry or the College of Engineering that you apply directly into those colleges as it is much more difficult to transfer into those colleges from another college once you're at Berkeley. Um, whereas if you're admitted into any of the other three colleges, it's much easier to transfer in and out of. 
Yeah, so we'll first start off with the College of Letters and Science. This is the college I belong to as a political science major. And it is the largest undergraduate college. Um, three fourths of undergraduates are a part of the College of Letters and Science. And it has five divisions. There's arts and humanities, biological sciences, mathematical and physical sciences, social sciences, and then undergraduate studies. With that, there is such a breadth of majors to explore. There are 80 plus majors in this college. And I love the College of Letters and Science, um, mostly because of the wide range of things that there are to explore. Um, this is one of the schools that you go into undeclared. And then you also have a seven course breadth requirement that you need to complete. And with that, what it allows you to do is really explore and make sure that what you're intending to major in is what you actually are passionate about and you're able to explore other passions. The College of Letters and Science has like 80 plus or well, 50 plus languages to explore, which is such an incredible opportunity that I don't think I've taken enough advantage of, but is definitely there for you if that's something that interests you. Um, and then it's also a college that's again, doing a ton of innovation and research. Um, in fact, 17 out of 25 of the Nobel Prizes that Berkeley has are from the College of Letters and Science. So this one holds a special place in my heart. <laughs> so I'm super excited because I get to talk about the Rouser College of Natural Resources, which is the college that I'm actually in with my environmental economics major. And this college actually has a really unique and special environmental focus that not many colleges actually, or sorry, not many universities actually offer. Um, and it's also a very diverse college. So you'll see here, some of our focuses include biological sciences, nutrition and toxicology, ecosystem management, interdisciplinary studies, social sciences, and of course, economics and policy. Um, so there's definitely a wide range of interests that you can pursue within this college, um, but it's really, really incredible to be a part of a community that's pursuing um, change and innovation as it pertains to the environment. Um, and we also have a really special sustainability and social justice focus, um, which I think is well captured in our slogan, see the bigger picture, make a better world. Um, and yeah, it's just, it's a very exciting college to be a part of for a number of reasons. But one of the reasons that um, I especially love it is because of its size. It's a very small college. And because of that, we have really excellent advising. and. Um, again, I love the diversity within the college itself. Environmental issues can definitely, um, you know, sort of be put in a box sometimes, but I think this college has really opened my eyes into, um, you know, the opportunities that exist for um, environmental interests at Cal and in the world. Yeah, my roommate is also a part of CNR. And um, to go off what you were saying, Sophia, something that they've said about it is that, you know, focusing on sustainability and social justice can be super daunting because just like the magnitude of the issue. But what happens in this college is they really instead look at it as like an opportunity. Like there's so much change that can happen and like you can be part of the change, which I just think is super cool and really inspiring to be around. Um, next up, we have the College of Environmental Design. This is one of my favorite colleges. I'm not a part of it. I just think it's super cool. Um, it's the smallest college made up of about 650 students and four majors. So there's architecture, landscape architecture, urban studies, and sustainable environmental design. And the motto of this college is craft ecologically sustainable and resilient, prosperous and fair, healthy and beautifully built environments. And I think this really shows in in where the college is housed, which is Bauer and Worcester Hall. Um, you can see it on the slide here. Very simple, straightforward building, but something that's super cool about it is it's really built to last and to teach students how to build the perfect building. And it has many aspects of it that are um, particularly focused on making it as sustainable as possible, um, which I just think is so cool. And again, so much innovation always happening at Berkeley. Um, another great thing about the College of Environmental Design is how hands-on it is. Um, 
this college, along with most things at Berkeley, is one where you're not just studying books and learn and you know reading and learning from that. You're learning from hands-on experience. So all students have a workspace, which you can see in the top right, um, where you can really do hands-on work in um, environmental design and learn by doing um, and work again with that innovation that's happening constantly. Next up is the College of Chemistry, which houses just about a thousand students, and it contains three majors, of course, chemistry, chemical engineering, and chemical biology. And this college has, this college is actually ranked number one globally. Um, and that's in large part because of the innovation and research that's going on in this college. It's completely mind blowing and really, really incredible work. Um, 16 elements on the periodic table were actually discovered right here at Berkeley, including Berkelium and Californium. I remember hearing about these for the first time, just thinking it was some sort of joke or something, but um, no, they were actually discovered right here at Berkeley. And um, in addition to that, you might be familiar with the Lewis dot structure as a way of depicting um, sharing bonds between electrons um, if you took a college chemistry class, but this um, way of depicting um, those bonds was actually also discovered here at Berkeley by a Berkeley professor. Um, so I hope that gives you an idea of the kind of innovation and research um, that's going on here in this college. I actually am not a chemistry major or really involved with chemistry all that much at Berkeley, but I did take a chemistry class my first semester at Cal and I was just completely blown away, shocked and surprised at the level of instruction that I was receiving, um, even in a simple intro class. And um, I feel like taking a chemistry class at Cal is sort of like a rite of passage, considering that we are ranked number one globally. And um, even though I didn't choose to pursue chemistry further, I definitely don't regret taking the class. It was extraordinary. It's funny that you say that you thought that the elements were a joke because I've told this story on a tour before, but we have like t-shirts that say Berkelium with like the periodic table um, sign. And I thought that it was just a funny play on words. And then I learned later that we actually discovered it. And I was like, wow, I did not give us enough credit at all. I just thought we were being funny. <laughs> um, next we have the College of Engineering. Um, all majors are ranked top nine globally. So again, one of the best. Um, it's approximately 3,800 students and it's made up of 11 majors. Um, this is another one of those that we recommend you apply, direct, you apply directly to because um, the course load is pretty rigorous. Uh, and there is so much opportunity in this college, like the College of Environmental Design. It's another one of those really hands-on experiences. You get real experience doing what you love. So when you enter the workforce, you have that hands-on experience. Um, within the college, um, there is a program called um, MET, which stands for Management, Entrepreneurship, and Technology. And with this program, you can get a dual degree in the College of Engineering, as well as the Haas School of Business. So up in the top right, you can see the women of MET um, for the class of 2022. Um, and this is a really great opportunity if you want to explore that intersection between engineering and technology and business, all of that. Um, also, if you are interested in the College of Engineering, which I did see, I think like 40% of you were interested, um, there is a separate engineering virtual visit that I highly recommend you go to if you want more specific expertise in the college that can give you a uh, much broader breadth of information than I or Sophia can. Um, but yeah, very incredible college doing incredible things. Yeah, so in terms of graduate schools, Berkeley has nine, including the Haas School of Business, the School of Education, the School of Information, Berkeley Law, Social, the School of Social Welfare, the School of Optometry, the School of Journalism, the School of Public Health, and the School of Public Policy. And um, you know, I'll just circle back to our Haas School of Business as we do offer an undergraduate business administration um, degree 
for undergraduates. Um, so you, if you're interested in business, you should definitely take advantage of that opportunity as our hospital business is um, extremely highly ranked. And so the way that undergraduate degree works is that you would essentially take the prerequisites required to apply into the major. And then at the end of your sophomore year, you would submit your application for the major. Um, and you know, that's a really great opportunity that we offer. Um, in addition to that, we also offer a global management program, um, biology and business and MET. So if you're interested in business, you can definitely look into those programs a bit more um, and consider applying into them. Um, but yeah, in terms of graduate schools, um, it's definitely a huge plus to have so many located on our campus. Um, and because of that, we as undergraduates are able to take advantage of that in terms of research um, and just speaking with graduate students about what their experience has been like, what sort of opportunities and research they're pursuing um, and, you know, talk to them about what our futures could look like. Yeah, there's also a ton of undergraduate majors or minors in um, many of these graduate schools. I'm a public or political science major and a really common minor to have is a public policy minor. And that's within the Goldman School of Public Policy. So definitely a lot of opportunities for undergraduates here as well. Um, with that, we're going to go into a little bit about the sh our structure and class size. So all Berkeley, well, most Berkeley classes are structured in a lecture discussion format. What this means is that one to two times a week, you'll have a lecture um, given by the professor. They'll go over, you know, all of the course content and dive deep into that. And then you'll have a separate discussion section that's going to be led by a graduate student instructor or what we refer to as a GSI. And this is typically a smaller group of students. You'll dive way deeper into the course um, work and really dive into the readings of that week or maybe do a lab um, to give you a good understanding of what you're learning um, and probably have a discussion regarding um, all of that. Um, this is one of my favorite aspects of Berkeley because you're really able to ask the questions you need to ask in a space with a smaller number of students. Um, and I just think it's such a great resource to have the graduate student instructor there. On top of that, um, you are, both the GSIs and professors do provide office hours. So if you're ever struggling in a class, have a specific question you wanna ask that you wanna ask aside from the larger class, you can go to their office hours and talk to them about um, you know, the course or you know, just life and their career, stuff like that. Um, this is such a great resource. And I think this is the key to really making a big school feel small. Um, by utilizing that resource and getting to know your professors on that one-on-one -on -one level. Um, aside from that, our class sizes, we do have a 19 to one student to faculty ratio and 81% of our classes actually have fewer than 50 students, uh, particularly in the upper division courses that you'll take when you're, after you declare a major. Um, these classes are typically really small and you really are able to dive deep into the course material and even get to know your peers well, which is really nice. Um, apart from classes, we have so many learning resources, specifically the Student Learning Center has one-on-one -on -one tutoring. They also have walk-in hours for tutoring and you can go and get help with common, um, typically lower division classes, most of the time chemistry <laughs> um, that you might be struggling with um, and get that one-on-one -on -one help if you need it. They also have writing labs. So if you're in one of the social sciences and you want to, um, get help on your writing, you can go and get individual advising um, as far as that goes. Such great resources that people should definitely take advantage of while they're here. Yeah, I totally agree, Lauren. I was certainly worried about Berkeley size um, in terms of class, um, in terms of like the actual class sizes themselves. When I came to Berkeley coming from such a small high school, um, but there are infinite ways to make your academic experience more personal and um, intimate. And definitely there are tons of ways to get to know your professors on a personal level. Um, I'll just share really quickly. Last semester, I took a human rights class and we were assigned um, a 10 page research paper that I honestly had no idea how to approach. And I went to my professor's office hours and 
he was super, super accommodating and understanding um, despite the challenges of remote learning. And we ended up meeting um, once every week leading up to the due date to that paper, which I was honestly just really touched by um, the fact that he cared that much and was willing to work with me so closely on this when he had so many other students. Um, but I'll just say, if you're willing to put in the time and the energy to ask for help, you will certainly receive it here at Cal. Um, moving on to our remote learning um, circumstances for the fall and spring of, or actually, so the fall of 2020 and the spring of 2021, we were completely remote and we are planning to be in person next semester. So I'll sort of skim over this quickly, um, but we certainly did meet the challenges of a remote semester um, in a number of ways. We had our hybridization goals in line with the CDC guidelines, um, prioritizing safety at every step along the way. In terms of our academic experience, every student was given a Zoom Pro account and to meet the needs of students located across the world, we had synchronous and asynchronous learning opportunities as well. Um, in terms of resources, we of course had virtual drop-in tutoring, which I also took advantage of. And um, we also had a semester in the cloud and instructional resilience. Um, but really quickly, I'll just add that as someone who's only experienced Berkeley um, while it was remote, I think that Berkeley did an excellent job of stepping up to the challenges of this global pandemic. And I think it's really reflective of, you know, this change maker attitude and the way that Berkeley in general approaches um, change. Um, it's, it's really a special thing to have witnessed. And even though it wasn't ideal, um, I'm just very proud of my university for that. Yeah, I'm very excited to go back in person, but I will miss being able to roll out of bed for an 8 a.m. and then roll back into bed after it. <laughs> that will be missed. Uh, all right, next we're going to talk about housing and dining. So um, Berkeley has, oh, you'll see a poll popping up um, asking you where you're joining us from so we can get to know you a little bit more. Um, but back to the housing and dining. Uh, typically, you'll have, there's residence halls, and which are set up like a normal dorm building that you would imagine, a long hall with multiple dorms lining the side of it. But we also have suite styles in a few of our residence buildings, which are going to be a smaller cluster of dorms together. Freshmen do get priority for housing. That being said, it's not required for freshmen to live on campus. I do recommend it, however. Um, there are so many resources that you get with living on campus. Um, one of them is a residential assistant or what you'll hear referred to as an RA. This is typically an older student that lives on your floor with you and is really there as a resource to help you with whatever you need, um, advice, um, you know, help with your roommate, etc. Um, we also have theme programs. So if you're interested in living with a group of students that is part of the same community as you, these are theme programs might be for you. Um, there's so many to choose from. There's an African-American theme program, Latinx theme program, one for women in STEM, um, really covering a wide range of communities. Um, and then there's also common areas. So you can really experience, um, have a social experience while living in the dorms um, and meet a lot of new people. A meal plan is included when you live on campus um, and our dining halls are great. Um, I definitely miss being able to just, you know, have a short little walk to a meal. Um, I am currently living off campus, so definitely miss that resource. Um, but typically our dining halls are either located on site of your dorm or just a short walk away. Uh, and then as far as housing during COVID goes, again, we'll skim over this quickly. Um, everyone did get a single room and you did have to wear face masks when you were out of your dorm, but there were still social pods. So you were able to interact with people like on your floor um, in that same social pod without your mask on and still have that social aspect of living on campus um, that you normally would have. So just continuing on our housing and dining options as you move on from your freshman year, we have campus housing offered 
um, after your freshman year, it's just not guaranteed. We also have the International House, which largely houses international students, but is not closed off to other students. So if you're interested in living in with an international community, that's definitely a cool opportunity to look into. We also have affiliated properties and off-campus apartments. I'll actually be living in an off-campus apartment next year, um, which I'm super excited about with my two roommates. And we also have co-op housing if you're interested in putting in some manual labor um, and living in a more shared housing environment. And then of course, we also have Greek housing if you join a fraternity or a sorority they will most likely have housing option for you to take advantage of if you choose to. We also offer a meal plan option after your freshman year, even if you're not living in the dorms or in a campus um, affiliated property, um, you can still opt into the meal plan if you are not really into cooking or if you enjoy the food. Um, and if you have more questions about Cal housing, you can definitely um, look into our website, which is housing.berkeley.edu. Next, we're going to dive into health and safety on campus, um, first covering the health aspect of that. Um, we, there are so many health resources on campus. The epicenter of all of those is going to be the Tang Center, which is um, pictured on your bottom right. Uh, here you can find urgent care, primary care, physical therapy, really all the resources you might need. And students are covered by the student health insurance, which you'll hear referred to as SHIP, Student Health Insurance Program. Um, so you're covered with that. Um, it's an opt out program, so you're automatically opted into it. But if you are covered by your parents' health insurance, then you can opt out of it and you still get access to all of the same campus resources that you would if you were on SHIP as well. Um, during COVID, there was COVID testing and tracing that was super accessible. I think really everyone living in the Berkeley area at the time got so used to once a week, twice a week going to get their uh, COVID test. Me and my roommates would all mob over um, and get our COVID test together, make sure we were staying safe. And then they also have resources like FAQs, webinars, and tips, um, giving out that health advice that you might need as a college student. Sometimes we let our health go by the wayside while we're focusing on our academics, which isn't the best and we should focus on that. Um, there's also psychological counseling, so important to keep up with your mental health, even when you're in school. And this is such a great resource that we have. Path to Care is a resource for sexual assault survivors. Um, and it's a resource on campus that's really working to um, eradicate our campus from um, sexual assault and really bring awareness to that through education and resources. Um, there's also the Optometry Eye Center. Um, with the graduate school, you students can get $5 eye exams, I think. Again, an amazing resource. And then there's just general stress relief. So there's Pause for Mental Health, which is a student-run organization, and they'll bring out little dogs, um, typically students own them and you're able to stop in between classes and pet the puppies and get that stress relief that you need. And then there's also an event called Llama Palooza that they put on typically around finals, um, which I haven't been able to experience yet, but seems so much fun. You can see it pictured in the top right. Um, just, you know, some silly stress relief stuff along with the greater health resources that the university has to offer. So moving on to um, some more camp campus safety services. Um, if you have any concerns about Berkeley being in a metropolitan area, um, you know, there are of course valid concerns, um, but they're definitely, um, excuse me, um, they're valid concerns, but the school handles them. Um, really well. I know personally I've never felt unsafe on campus or around campus um, and that is in large part because of these programs and systems that the university has in place. So for example we have our own UC police department um, and if you've ever toured a college campus you might be familiar with the blue light pole system which are essentially blue light poles scattered throughout campus and if you ever have any safety concerns you simply interact with them by pushing a button and um, a safety officer will be there shortly to help you out with whatever that problem is. So that's really um, reassuring to know that we have those resources scattered throughout campus. 
Um, we also have a warn me system, which essentially gives us um, alerts on our phones um, surrounding any sort of um, safety precautions that we should know about um, that are happening near or around campus. Um, and then we also have a residence three hall point security. So I lived in the dorms last semester and these three checkpoints include the main entrance to the dorms. Um, so you need a key card to um, access um, the main entrance. And then you also need your key card to access either the stairs or the elevator. And then of course you'll have your individual key to access your own room. Um, in terms of our night services, we have a really cool program called Bear Walk, which is actually student run. And if you ever find yourself studying late on campus or hanging out with friends late on campus or just on campus late at night, you can utilize this Bear Walk resource. And essentially um, a fellow Berkeley student will escort you home. And I've heard that um, you can actually make friends this way and honestly just have a nice conversation. We also have our night safety shuttle. If you're not so much into walking, you can um, access this shuttle and um, get home via a bus. Yeah, there's so many safety resources and especially the nighttime ones really make it so I never feel unsafe on campus. I always know I can get home when I need to. Um, next, we're gonna delve into student resources. So there are so many resources on campus that we've kind of been touching on throughout the tour. Um, there are resources centered around identity and community, um, such as the Centers for Educational Justice and Community Engagement. Um, these span a broad spectrum of communities. There's a center for African-American students, Latinx students, um, indigenous students, Asian and Pacific Islander, um, really every community you have resources. Um, there's also the Associated Students of the University of California or the ASUC, which is like student government. Um, they advocate to the university on behalf of students. Um, if you're interested in student government, you can get involved in one of the offices of the ASUC. Um, but along with that, they have so many resources. Um, they have a legal clinic um, that is there for you to use if you need to, and just so many other different resources um, that are available for you if you need it. Um, there's also a transfer student center and a center for undocumented students. So really every community of people has a place to go if they're in need. And then there's also um, resources for support and equity. Um, there's the disabled students program. So if you're someone that um, needs help um, or need, might need, um, you know, more time to complete things or um, someone to take notes or just that extra help um, for equity in your classes, then there's the Disabled Students Program. And then there's also the Basic Needs Center. So if you're ever failing to meet any of your basic needs, um, food, housing, etc., you can go to the Basic Needs Center and have these needs met. Uh, I think that it's amazing that the university provides this and um, such an incredible resource if you ever come into um, the circumstances that you need to use it. So beyond academics, student life at Berkeley is um, really, really exciting and diverse. We have over a thousand registered student organizations. So no matter your interest, you will definitely find um, a group of people with shared interests here at Cal. Um, and we also have tons of opportunities to get involved with volunteering, um, as well as campus employment. We have our career center. So if you're looking for a job and need some help, um, you know, accessing um, career opportunities, we have a team of people ready to help you out with that. In terms of internships, because of our proximity to San Francisco and Silicon Valley, there are definitely tons of internships um, spanning a broad range of interests and um, sectors that you can apply into. Um, and there's a lot of help, um, you know, that we give our students to, to um, sort of navigate that internship search as well. And then we also have many study abroad opportunities. I'm hoping to study abroad sometime in the future. Um, and then we also have, you know, the larger Bay Area to explore. 
Um, I definitely explored the Bay Area a lot last semester, especially going to school online. I had a lot of free time to really get out onto the fire trails, go on some hikes, see some really, really incredible views. I got out onto the Berkeley Marina, which is actually how I got my job as a dock hand. Um, I got to go paddle boarding on the most beautiful day ever. And yeah, there's just so much to do here on campus and our student life is definitely alive and well. Yes, so much to do. And with that, there's also athletics. So with athletics, there's several levels of competition. Of course, we have our division one athletics, um, which you can go and watch and, and you know, show spirit for our football team, basketball team, but you can see pictured um, such fun games to get involved in. But if that's not the level you're at as far as competing goes, we also have club um, opportunities and intramural and recreational sports. So the club is going to be a little bit more competitive. You might have to try out for the team. And then with the intramural and recreational sports, it's really for everyone. Um, you can get involved in with your friends. Maybe you have a club that all wants to become part of an intramural team together. Or um, you can also just go onto the intramural website and become part of a team individually. And this is such a great way to meet people and get out and about and um, have a good time. So, so many um, resources as far as um, athletics goes. Um, there's also the recreational sports facility. So if you don't want to join a specific sport, um, you can go to RSF, which is our gym and get involved that way. Maybe take some classes. I love a good Zumba class and I've been to many at RSF. So if that's um, more your speed, then there's also that resource as well. Um, overall, Berkeley is just so incredible when it comes to athletics. We have a ton of Berkeley students going to the Olympics this year. So incredible. And with that, we have um, 207 Olympic medals um, collectively that Berkeley students have won. So really incredible athletics happening on all levels um, of ability. Um, yeah, so I'm just going to talk a little bit about some of our remote resources and the ways that Berkeley has facilitated building community while um, online. Um, we definitely have a pretty vast social media network. Um, I would definitely recommend getting Facebook if you're an incoming freshman or transfer student. Um, there's just a lot of information being passed around and opportunities and um, various ways to meet people. Um, when you get Facebook. So honestly, just even though it seems a little weird, like just get it. Um, but there are also tons of student groups and clubs that are facilitating um, community online and adapting to the challenges that come with online learning and social distancing. But again, we're gonna, we plan to be in person next semester. So hopefully a lot of these concerns you won't have to worry about. Um, but we also have, depart we have had department webinars and professional and personal development opportunities. And we've also had a ton of guest lecturers. Um, I remember last semester, I got to see Marianne Williamson speak. Um, if you're not familiar with her, she was a 2020 presidential candidate um, and she tailored her speech to um, Berkeley as a location and as a university. And so that was a really, really incredible experience to be able to hear her uh, give that lecture specifically to Berkeley's community. Um, and then we also have GBO, which stands for Golden Bear Orientation, which all freshmen will take part in. It's basically um, an advising opportunity and um, preparation to start your four years um, or two years at Cal. And you can also make friends this way and network this way. And basically um, it just prepares you for um, your journey at Cal. Next up, a little bit about our libraries and research. We have so many resources here. Um, there's 24 official campus libraries located all across campus. There's really a library for whatever your study style is. If you want it super quiet, there's a library for you. If you want it a little bit more 
a little bit more commotion around you, there's a library for you. And all of these have extensive online resources. So this was really helpful in our online semester. Um, just because we were off campus didn't mean we didn't have these resources available to us, which was incredible. And as we've talked about throughout the tour, we are a really great research institution. So um, this doesn't mean that you need to wait till you're a graduate student to do research. There's a lot of research opportunities for undergraduates. Um, the most prominent of those is the Undergraduate Research Apprenticeship Program, or what you'll hear referred to as URAP. Um, with this, you can apply to up to three different um, research opportunities through the URAP website and hopefully get an opportunity to be a part of one of them. Um, and just so you guys know, this isn't solely for STEM students. And when I was coming in as a freshman, I was under the impression that only STEM majors did research, and that's so not true. If you're part of the social sciences, you can also get involved in research um, in your specific field. And then there's also departmental opportunities um, in your specific discipline. I also know a ton of um, professors that have just, you know, spoken to their classes about an opportunity that they have specifically, and um, you're able to get an opportunity that way with um, a professor that you already know, which is really awesome. So definitely encourage getting involved in research as early as you can. Moving on to some of our famous alumni and professors, we have Stephen Chu, Jennifer Doudna, Beverly Cleary, Chris Pine, Janisha Adams Skinyard, Steve Wozniak, and Alex Morgan. Um, so you may or may not be familiar with some of these names, but Jennifer Doudna was actually one of our more recent um, famous alumni as she won the 2020 Nobel Prize in Chemistry, um, which is super, super exciting. Um, but yeah, this is just a little bit of um, an idea of, you know, our, our networks and our um, famous alumni and professors, and we're super proud of them and we love to celebrate them. And um, who knows, one of you could be pictured on the screen one day. I love that. <laughs> Um, all right, just to cover a few campus highlights as we close out here, uh, hopefully soon you guys will all be able to make it to our campus in person, but until then, I'll just cover a little bit of the highlights. Our campus is so beautiful. Um, on one side of it, you have the city. On the other, you have the hills and so much nature to explore. Um, it's so green. We have Strawberry Creek running right through the middle of campus, and um, at the Campanile, the top of the Campanile, you can see a beautiful view of the bay and the city of San Francisco right across the way. So this is something, the campus is really something that drew me to the school and I take advantage of it every single day, especially when it's beautifully sunny outside like it is today in Berkeley. Yay, thank you both so much. We're gonna move on into a few questions. So our first question is for Lauren. We had a visitor ask, on average, how many students are usually in a class? Yeah, so like I um, had mentioned during the tour, 81% of our classes are 50 people or fewer. Um, with that being said, our undergraduate classes are gonna be on the larger side because these are typically, or sorry, our um, lower division undergraduate classes are gonna be on the larger side because these are typically, you know, the, um, bigger requirements that a lot of people need to get for their major. Um, but as you get deeper into um, the specific major you're studying, the class sizes are going to get a lot smaller and you're going to be able to get more of that one on one experience. Um, so as a poli sci major, I'd say my average class size and class size in my upper division classes is probably 60 students. Um, so I really do get to know a lot of the students that I'm in class with um, and get to know my professor if that's something that you want to do. Amazing. Yeah, that was something that I was really concerned about. I went to a really small high school. So coming to a school with 40,000 people, I was very intimidated, but having the larger lecture and the smaller discussion made it a lot more soothing. Um, now we have one more question for both of you. We'll start with Sophia and then go to Lauren. But what is your Berkeley story? What drew you to Berkeley and what has kept you here so far and made you want to become a tour guide and ambassador for the campus? Yeah, so my Berkeley story actually starts as a little kid. My parents both met at Berkeley, so I grew up coming to football games and, you know, meandering around the campus, getting to know the city. I also had some family in the Bay Area, so I grew up 
generally like pretty familiar with Berkeley and with the Bay Area. Um, but I definitely remember sort of picking up on the special qualities that made Berkeley so unique and so distinct from other universities. And it really goes back to this change maker mentality that the students at this university have. Um, and so, you know, I really picked up on that special quality and Berkeley became like this dream school for me. Um, it was sort of like this unattainable reality that I had in the back of my head um, growing up. And so when it came time to apply to colleges, Berkeley was, you know, my ultimate goal, but I never thought I would get in. Um, and so I was sort of set on going to a small liberal arts college far away from California, um, Berkeley being the exception, um, but that was sort of the plan. And so when I got into Berkeley and, you know, some of these other schools, I was sort of at a crossroads because I'd gone to small schools my entire life. I was, you know, sort of shocked that I got into Berkeley and I was dealing with um, this really difficult decision um, because of my circumstances. And um, what ended up happening is that I, I just sort of returned to um, that gut feeling that I picked up on as a kid. And um, I just, I needed to be a part of Berkeley's culture because of how active its students were in pursuing their passions and pursuing the things that made them distinct and unique. And that's something that I only really picked up on at Berkeley's campus. And I did end up touring like over 25 colleges. Um, and the fact that Berkeley's was, you know, one of the only colleges that really had this culture of change making and um, student advocacy that was supported within the student body and by the institution um, really made that decision crystal clear in the end. Yeah, for me, um, similarly, Berkeley was always my dream school. Um, and I just had a feeling that it was where I was supposed to be. And that like, when I got here, I, it would be like, I would have like such an incredible community of people that were like-minded and passionate. And I just knew that it was where I wanted to go. And then when spring of my senior year came around and I got my admissions back, I was unfortunately waitlisted. And so I kind of had to shift my entire perspective um, and choose a different school and get my mindset on that. And then luckily I got off the wait list and instantly I was like, okay, yeah, like this is where I meant to be it's where I belong um, and so I ended up here in the fall um, and then when I got here it wasn't that instant community that I had expected and it was a little bit harder for me to transition and I wasn't really sure how to go about meeting people and I just didn't feel that click that I thought I would um, and then it wasn't until I was walking along Sproul, um, and, you know, you have clubs lined each side advertising themselves. And I found Superb, um, which is the club I'm involved in now. And I interviewed and got in and it was the people there accepted me with such open arms and it was the sense of community that I had wanted and that I thought I would have and it was the strongest sense of community I had ever felt in my life and so that's what really made me fall back in love with Berkeley and has kept me here is that sense of community that I feel um, I think that there's really somewhere on campus for everyone to have that and it's going to be like the strongest connection you've ever felt when you find that um, you know spot on campus for you. Wow, I really could not agree more. I feel like there definitely is somewhere for everyone to really find their home. And I found that in the rally committee and I'm so glad you were able to find that in Superb. Um, just a few resources so that our visitors can stay in contact with us. We have our U-Visit tour, which is a 3D walkthrough of our campus. So you can check it out. Our campus is also now open to visitors. So you can come on campus and walk through as well. Uh, you can follow us on Instagram at visit UC Berkeley and stay up to date there. 
You can also send us an email if you have any questions that we weren't able to get to today or that you think of later on and a student ambassador just like the three of us you're meeting today will be able to answer your question. We also have a Bear Talk blog, which is a blog where students just like us write about our day to day lives. We have other recur recorded virtual visits available on our YouTube channel, Visit UC Berkeley. For resources about our 150 years of women celebration, you can check out 150w.berkeley.edu. For our specific admissions presentation, you can check out admissions.berkeley.edu slash visit and find out all the resources you need there. And finally, we have other ambassador student panels and engineering visits. There's actually an engineering visit happening later today. I know a lot of you were interested in engineering. So you can sign up for that the same place you signed up for this tour today. And finally, a big thank you to all of our guests for joining us and a thank you to Lauren and Sophia for giving us such an amazing overview of Berkeley. And I'd like to end this the same way we begin and end a lot of things here at Cal with a big go bears on three. So if you two would like to join me, we'll go ahead. All right, one, two, three. Go bears. Go bears. Thank you.